Do you want to know how I use Microsoft 365 Copilot to massively reduce the time taken producing and analyzing PowerPoint decks? I'm the Productivity Coach and today I show you how. Hi, I'm Stuart Riddout, the Productivity Coach, and I work at Microsoft as part of our Modern Work team. Now, this is one video in a series where I'm looking at the newly released Microsoft 365 Copilot functionality, which was released on the 1st of November, and specifically how I use it to transform the way that I work. Because I guarantee, if you get Copilot, it absolutely is a game changer in terms of reducing the time taken to analyze and produce documents, meet, analyze meetings, like do notes, action points, PowerPoint decks, Excel, everything. Um, and so I've already looked at how we can use Copilot in Teams meetings and in Microsoft Word. So this is the next most popular one for me um, is how I use it in PowerPoint. So let's just dive right in and I can show you uh, how I use it. Okay, so let's start off with an existing deck because one of the great things about Copilot is that the ability to uh, kind of ingest and analyze these really, really complicated decks. So this is a Microsoft 365 Copilot technical overview deck that we use uh, when we do technical sessions with customers. So if I click on Copilot here, I can go and I can do things like uh, organize a presentation, but specifically, I'm going to click summarize this presentation. Now, this will take a few moments uh, because it is a massive slide deck, um, but I have there's no editing here. There's no time lapse here to speed anything up because I want you to get the proper real experience. And you can see that it's already starting to produce results to summarize the deck. So I can see data protection, responsible AI, um, the overview of Copilot. And here it's got all of those references. Where is it taken that summary from in terms of slides? I can click here where it says 59 references and see those slides there as well. So it's really, really great in terms of transparency. But I can ask questions of it as well. So if I said, what is a large language model? Um, and it will go in there. Now, this has got 130 slides in this deck. Um, so it makes it much quicker to go and do that rather than start to look through slides and find the answer. Um, so again, it is quite large, so it just takes a moment to pull through uh, what it's got there. But hopefully any moment now, it will return with an answer. Now, it's saying the key thing here is it's saying according to the presentation. So when you use Copilot, it will tell you where that information is coming from. So this has come out of this document rather than kind of out of the large language model. And you can see here, I can click on this and it will tell me where it's actually come from specifically. Okay, um, if I go back up to the start, then let, we could ask all sorts of questions. So I could say, is my data used to train the LLM or the large language model? Okay, and it uses the slides and it uses the, um, the speaker notes as well to be able to get these results here. So again, just taking a moment to do that, but much quicker than looking. And again, here it says, according to the presentation, no, your data is not used to train the LLM. And we can see here again, which slide that answer comes from. So it's really easy to be able to kind of, um, you know, be transparent about where it comes from. And you can see that it's got these great suggested questions as well. So now that it knows what's in the deck, it can start to suggest questions that you might want to ask. So this one here is, what is the difference between ChatGPT and Microsoft 365 Copilot. And again, it should be able to return a result here. And again, it's saying according to the presentation, and here now it's telling me about what ChatGPT is. It's saying it's a general purpose LLM. And then here now it's comparing and contrasting that with Copilot. So we've got ChatGPT at the top and then Copilot here. Um, and again, it's telling me what the references are, where it's coming from, um, and, and help me here. So what about if we wanted to do a new presentation? So here I am, I'm gonna do a brand new presentation from scratch. So this is a completely blank presentation. Now I could either um, just ask it and, and get information from the LLM or I could specifically target a file, but I'm gonna start off with just a general uh, presentation. So here I'm gonna say, create a presentation about the benefits of Microsoft Teams for team collaboration. 
Okay, and because I've not specified a, um, a source where I want it to take from, I like I, I want to create a presentation from a file, um, and I'll show you that in a little bit. This is using information that it finds on the large language model to be able to do this. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna go through that, and I can already see now this progress bar down the bottom, it's starting to create this. Um, and then it's saying, you know, it could help you to change it or you can use designer, which is also based on AI. So we can see we've got slides on real time collaboration, efficient file sharing, um, improved productivity and efficiency and things like this. And the images, um, it, it's pulled in automatically. And you can see here that it's even generated speaker notes for me. Um, so it makes it really, really easy for you to be able to kind of produce this deck and just go off and present this. And if I just let's have a look here and um, look at it in slideshow mode. Oh, that's on my other screen. Let me just switch this around so you can see what the speaker view looks like. So there you go. And you can see that my slides, all my slides have got speaker notes here. So uh, rather than just reading through what's on the slide, I can use those speaker notes so I can be a really confident uh, presenter. But I can make edits as well. So this one here, it's just got three bullets. I maybe want some more. So if I say add another two bullet points, okay, and send that, then hopefully that will then be able to kind of expand out um, the, the detail on there. Okay, uh, pulling things together. You can find the bullet feature. Ah, so here it's misunderstood what I've said. So this is down to my prompt and it's saying you can find the bullet feature on the home tab. Um, so let's be more specific here. So add another two bullet points to this slide. Okay, so again, this is about this prompt, you know, creation. Really make sure that you're very specific about what you want because if I said add another two bullet points, it didn't know that it wanted that that on the specific slide. So because I've specified this, you can see here now that it's added two extra bullet points onto my slide here. Okay, but what if I wanted to produce something using like either one of these templates at the top here or even my corporate template? So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go into my Microsoft uh, company templates and we've got a couple of different ones. So if I was doing something about Teams, I could take something out of that. But I'm going to do a generic one and I'm going to use this blue Microsoft brand template. I'll just give that a moment for it to download. Um, and then this is this is something I get lots of questions on is like, can we use our own templates in this? And absolutely you can. So I've got my presentation. Let me just clear out all of these slides that are in that. Okay, and now I'm going to go over to Copilot. And what I'm going to do this time is create a deck from a file that I've already got. So if I click create presentation from file, it says paste your Word document link here. So if I go over to this one, so this is um, a document I produced about annual reviews. And let me just grab that copy link there. Just take a moment to get that. There we go. And if I go back to my PowerPoint now and just paste that link in there hit send and off it will go. So now what it will do is it will go and look at that deck and rather than producing it from the content on the large language model, which it did, it uses this deck. And actually I use this deck, uh, I produce this deck using uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot itself. So um, it's uh, it's already using material that it's already produced, but uh, that doesn't it doesn't matter if you've produced that or written it from scratch. So it's shown me the structure of what I've got here and then we can see that progress as it goes through. Again, I'm not changing any time on this, so you can see exactly what happens. And just something interesting's popped up here. So you can see here at the top, it's saying that it's automatically applied the sensitivity label general. And that's because if I go back and look at my source material, that is the sensitivity label that is there. So it's inherited that sensitivity label and has applied it to my new document here. So you can see all of my slides here. This is in the corporate template. If I look on layout, you can see the template that it's using. It's using title only, but I could pick another one. So uh, there's multiple different title slides in this one. Okay, and we can see that it's pulled in that blue, those blue titles. Um, it's pulled in images from the internet here. Okay, and we can see those. And again, it has generated those speaker notes. Now it's slightly different this time because I've got the speaker notes at the top here and then underneath, I've got the original content. So um, if uh, rather than the LLM one, 
we might say, well, actually, you know, why, why, why is it talking about being specific and actionable? And then here I can say, oh, in the original text, it said about being specific and actionable. So it makes it much easier to do that. Um, now, we get lots and lots of uh, questions about how you can um, set up your templates and things like this. Now, don't forget, there is this um, adoption website. So adoption.microsoft.com forward slash copilot. Um, and in the PowerPoint section, it talks about how you can uh, make your templates available, etc. So if I go to the adoption page and then go copilot in apps, then copilot in PowerPoint, click on learn more, then it will give me some of the suggested ways that I can use that. Okay, so I can go here and you can see to create new presentations. Uh, edit and summarize your presentations, organize them so you can use it to structure your slides. And then there's this one here that says make your presentations look great. And if you click learn more here, I'll stick this note as well, this uh, URL uh, in the in the notes for this as well. But it talks about how you can set up this organizational asset library so that those uh, decks come in. So there you have it. Uh, it's really, really easy to get started really quickly using PowerPoint and Microsoft 365 Copilot. I know for lots of people it's a really tedious task to like take a document and then have to go and um, produce a PowerPoint uh, slide deck from that. And it doesn't have to be like that. Um, the one that I used there about uh, HR guidance was quite a um, you know quite a, a wordy prosy type of document, but we, I've done it with examples with technical spec documents and things like this. So the great thing about Copilot is it really understands your data and it makes it a really quick and easy job to produce things and understand it and uh, just get great results really really quickly. So hopefully you found this useful. If you haven't seen the other videos on how you can use it in Teams meetings and how you can use it in Microsoft Word, then definitely take a look at those because they will help you get up and running really, really quickly if you're using Copilot. I'd love to know if you're using Copilot um, and some of maybe the prompts that you're using or some of the successes that you're seeing. So if you've got those, then please pop those into the comments because I love to see those and we can pass those on to the product team as well. And if uh, other than that, I will see you again on another video.